So it's like a live show, but it's also recording a show. So <laughs> this is obviously not going to be a flawless presentation here. Arsenio Hall Show. Aloha, folks. Welcome back to Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. This is not the Breezeway. We are in Indianapolis. You've seen the outtakes, right? We are in Indianapolis, Indiana at the Inferno Room for Makahiki. Have you guys had a fun Makahiki? Yeah! You gonna come back next year? Yeah! Am, am I gonna come back next year? Yeah! <laughs> Rad, so, oh we got, we, okay, so we have stuff on the TV because I'm a professional. Did we figure that out? Did you figure that out? <laughs> oh my God. You know what I like is that you guys have all seen, well I hope, some of the show, right? Yeah! So you guys are familiar with how much I screw up at the end of this thing. Yes. You, all you, like, my, my parents are like, wow, you're so good in front of the camera, and I'm like, yeah, you don't see, there's like a lot of mess throughout the whole thing, so. So, tonight we're gonna make a cocktail from this book, Drinks of Hawaii. Yes. Drinks of Hawaii. Hey Spike. What? Your tech guy in, at the Hookie Lao didn't have this much trouble. I know. He <laughs> didn't have this much fun either. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a drink from this book right here. This is Drinks of Hawaii from 1971. So. <laughs> you guys are very patient. I really appreciate it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go to that one. Yeah, rad, okay. Beat it. If you don't already know me, <laughs> I have a show on YouTube called Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. Obviously, it came out of the pandemic where we were all sitting at home and I was like, you know, I got this band, The Hula Girls, we can't perform anymore. So I was like, I'll just start going through, actually it was Beach Bum Berry's cocktails first. And then he was like, uh, how about don't do all my recipes online? So they just, everybody has them. So I was like, you got it, you're the dude. So I pivoted and I started doing other stuff. but. In like two years, we've, we're at like 12,000 subscribers and I really do appreciate everybody here who subscribes and Patreon members and the whole thing. I really do appreciate that. Go to the next one. <laughs> it's gonna be one of those things. Well, yeah, there's like, there's like more. It's not just one. Oh yeah, there's me. So like, I did all kinds of cocktails, right? I did like the Voodoo Grog and I was Trying so hard to be super specific about the glassware, the garnish, although that bone straw was not, you know, uh, a Trader Vic thing. It was a, that's actually a Surfside Sip straw, which is super rad. And, but so I had a lot of fun, like really dialing in and trying to make the, the, the cocktails the way that they're supposed to be made. And then I had some friends on. Ed Hamilton reached out to me. Ed launched his zombie blend on there. He launched his uh, Navy Grog blend. And he just came on and made a, a tea punch, which, uh, I don't know if you've had it, it's, it's a very questionable cocktail. <laughs> and then I had Hurricane Hayward from uh, the Mai Kai and that whole, that whole region. Leandro from the Educated Barfly. He's a very nice guy in person. And then I was like, I got an idea. I, I shoot pinup photography, right? So maybe I'll have uh, some of my models on there. So Tiffany Toth here, who's a, a Playboy model. Yeah. Pinup Palmer. <laughs> Murder Queen? Yeah. And then I was like, well, Halloween's coming. Yeah. We gotta do some Halloween specials. And I always die in those, right? Because, you know, Halloween. Panties. Yeah. Panties the Clown <laughs> was born on this thing. And, and McBiff, of course, is like a great, I mean, it might be McBiff or might not or whatever. Uh, McBiff is like a Disney uh, artist guy. And I was like, are you sure about this? Because it's got really creepy vibes of like, you know, like, I don't, well, I don't want to say it because you, you can't say that kind of stuff. Which brings us to Drinks of Hawaii. Yeah. This book is rad. It's all illustrated. It was written by a guy named Paul B. Dick. Yeah. Which is like, that's, that's, that's funny. 
The cartoons are funny. Super amazing little eBay purchase. But he features cocktails specifically from Hawaii, which is so funny because we all know that they all basically came from Hollywood and that kind of thing. But then eventually Hawaii started making their own stuff with Harry Yee at the um, Hilton Hawaiian Village. But he like talks about hangovers and he's like, yeah, drinking's not really that, it's not that good, but it's also like super fun, so. But tonight we're gonna make a cocktail called the Orchid's Kiss. I did one of these drinks on the episode last night. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you guys saw that? Yeah. Oh, thanks. But before we get into that, the rad thing about this is that it, it like, it tells you a little history, a little story about the Orchid's Kiss and what, how he ended up finding like the whole deal. The Nani Loa will forever hold a tender spot in my heart since after a most enjoyable stay there in 1954, I was arrested. Yes. Paul B. Dick was arrested. Lost my spot. <laughs> Upon my return to Honolulu for stowing away on the SS Luralene. So I was like, okay, the Nani Loa, what's that? And the SS Luralene, what's that? So I looked it up. There's the SS Luralene, right? He was like DiCaprio in that movie where the, the boat sinks. Stowing away, painting uh, naked chicks. I don't know if he was doing that, but Paul, Paul B. Dick, you know? That's the Nani Loa. I love those hotels in Hawaii that are like two levels, they're low, they're like, but you go to the pool, beautiful pool right on the beach there. Look at the pool. And there's like two hot chicks sitting there and you can see the ocean, but you can be in the pool. Weird. That's the hotel room. And I was like, it's very nice. It's very Danish modern. And, and you go, yeah, that's, that's nice. I was kind of let down because if you go to Coco Palms and the sinks were giant clam shells, there were like carvings on the walls. So I saw that and I was like, very nice. Like we'd be stoked to go there now if it looked like that. Well, it doesn't. I'm not gonna show you the bum out pictures because if you look at it now, you're like, oh dude. There's the restaurant where they serve the Orchid's Kiss. One second, go to the next one. I wanted to give you a bit of a, a palate cleanser and show you what real tiki is. I mean, Chris and the staff here, dude, this is real, real tiki. I mean, I'm very much a purist because I, I think that this aesthetic needs to be done and, and protected and, and it's just, this is, this is what original tiki should look like. So I wanted to show you that photo because that's what that restaurant could have looked like. But in Hawaii, you don't need a tiki bar because Hawaii is the tiki bar, right? Like, th that's why Indiana makes so much sense for a tiki bar, you know? There's no, there's no ocean here. There's fake palm trees in it. Well, no, the real palm trees, but they're like taxidermy. Preserved. Yeah. Taxidermy palm trees. All right, but look, so check this out, right? Oh, going back. over here is like the parking garage. I think you park in there. The rickshaws would pick you up and then you, you go around and up this ramp. Look at the carved poles. Look at the hanging uh, fish float lamps. And then like the glowing eyes of a tiki in the sign. It's just everything. That's just a sidebar. I just wanted you guys to be stoked on Tiki as much as I am. All right, next thing. But before we get into the cocktail, I want to bring on a guest like we've done a million times before with burlesque performers and models and Ed at Hamilton. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to bring on Frenchie LaRouge. Hi. Hi. We just watched you do an incredible burlesque performance. Oh, thank you. You got like a, you took a lot of, you took a lot of clothes off and yeah. found a lot of the people. Y'all all saw it all. So. Y'all saw. Okay. Y'all all saw it all. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you have a burlesque studio down the road, I understand. Uh, we perform at a venue down the road called the White Rabbit Cabaret. And how long has that been going on for? Um, I've personally been performing for 12 years. So a little, little The White Rabbit time. Cabaret has been around as long. Where else have you performed other than Indiana? Yeah, um, I've actually performed at Tiki Oasis a couple times. All right. Um, you know, oh, I think I photographed you there, right? You probably did, yeah. Take pictures. Yeah. Uh, Chicago, you know, around mm -hmm. the Midwest. What do you think about Tiki drinks? I love Tiki drinks. Right. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And I, I believe your boyfriend is, what, what's his role here? Uh, he's a bartender. He's a bartender here. So very excited to make this drink with you. Um, I looked at the ingredients. It's a questionable cocktail. <laughs> so I hope, you're, I hope you're ready for this. All right. And for this cocktail, we will be using oh. Hamilton White Stash. Ooh, guava juice. All right. 
she said it. I was like, I'm supposed to be saying it, but oh, that's I'm fine. Sorry. No, it's all right. And the next one is this one. I think this is, oh, I'm so sorry. Pineapple juice. <laughs> Pineapple juice. Okay. I'm just confirming, you know. Yes, thank right. you. And grenadine. Okay, so we're gonna jump into the cocktail. I do appreciate the, the studio audience here. You guys have been super patient and we are all gonna be tasting the cocktail together. So it's, yeah. We're, we're all gonna be super stoked on it or we're all going down in the SS Laureline <laughs> with DiCaprio together. I feel okay. like everyone's already drunk. I know. So does it really matter? All day long, I've been, I've been you know, shooting video and stuff and I've, I've been trying really hard to be at least coherent for you guys. Although, you know, it's been a little bit of a rocky show here. So I'm very excited to start drinking finally at 10, 30 or 11, whatever it is. Okay, so this is a real bar, dude. I, I'm like, yeah. there's cups it's, inside of cups here. It's like a long way over here. It is a long way yeah. over here. Okay, so I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the drink in each of these cups. Okay, why don't we start with the guava juice? Two ounces of guava juice per right. thing. Okay. Technical. Talk. Per thing. Are you much of a bartender? I am not. You just you rely on your uh, your boyfriend. Yeah, he makes all the drinks, you know. He's very good at it. All right, in there. Yep. Got it. Okay, and then okay. one more. All right. Cool. Okay. All right. Next uh, thing here. Let's do the pineapple. <laughs> Let's do the pineapple juice. Two ounces. Yeah. Okay. It's a lot of juice. There's a lot of juice. So, of course, this is 1971. You know, Tiki goes into a bit of a backslide in the early or late 60s, early 70s, through the 80s, 90s. It's a mess. Oh. Thankfully, the 2000s, places like this, have just turned it into an art that we're all super stoked on. Let's do a dash of grenadine. I think Trader Vic called a dash eight drops. I feel like it's going to be a squirt. Be like... How about, okay, let's... Okay. I'm calling that eight. All right. You want to do the other eight? I... Don't ruin my eight oh over my here. Oh my God. Okay. Okay, we good? I feel like I did it. Okay. Right. You did it. I did it. Two ounces of Mr. Ed Hamilton's incredible white stash. You ever tasted this rum? Oh yeah. All right. You guys like white stash? Yes! It's the best white rum, isn't it? That's well, one of them. It's the best. Woo. All right, so that's the drink. That's it. Pretty quick. I'll tell you right away, the guava juice, I'm just like, oh no. You know, like good tiki drinks really don't dabble in guava too much. So it'll be interesting to see what this tastes like. Let's do some ice here. Just gonna do, wow, that is a lot of ice. <laughs> Your professional scoops are way uh, scoopier than my breezeway scoops. Okay, you do that one and I will do this one. Oh Lord, okay. Have you ever shaked a cocktail before? I mean, yeah, like in my basement, you know. <laughs> Your basement? Yeah. We don't have basements in California, so oh, it just sounds like we a- We got basement bars out here. Oh. All right. All right. He's like, okay, I did it. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. And shake. <laughs> I feel like I should take my shirt off I standing mean, next to you like a performance. I already did. I know you did. It's so. like, we could do a duo? Okay. Sure. I don't want to do that. Well. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, look okay. at these incredible Inferno Room glasses. Pretty wow. cool. Wow. Are these for sale? Sold out. Sold out. Can't get them. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. So let's pour that in there. Do you guys want to start passing out those drinks? Do you have a favorite modern burlesque performer? Oh, um, you know, she's a good friend and I think she's the best in the country, Jeez Louise. Jeez Louise? Yeah. I don't know her. Really? I don't get she's, out much, I guess. You know, St. Louis, Chicago, and now she lives in New Orleans. Oh, okay. I like that your response wasn't necessarily what is expected. There's one that is very expected. You know. Yeah, and you know. she's great as well. Yeah. And then we are gonna garnish with an orchid and a pineapple wedge. <laughs> Thank you. Wedge. It's already been cut. That's how professional the uh, situation is here. Oh, you guys are you guys are already tasting it? No. Oh, you're not. 
The anticipation is killing me. We're just waiting for a couple straws. We don't want to ruin her lipstick, right? Okay. And then we're going to add some swizzle sticks, too. Look at this, like, flaming skull. So cool. Have you been to a lot of tiki bars? I've probably been to, like, 30. Oh, that's, that's a pretty good amount. Mm -hmm. 30 tiki bars? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, do you have a favorite tiki bar? I knew you were going to ask me this. <laughs> I have... This is a multi-tiered answer. You know the owner's like standing right. Listen, <laughs> just let me, okay. Yeah. So for sentimental reasons, probably my favorite tiki bar is uh, Frankie's in Las oh, Vegas. Oh, right. Because it is the first tiki bar that me and my partner Eric went to together. Mm -hmm. But as far as drinks and obviously interior, I mean Inferno Room. It's really. You really can't beat it. You truly can't beat it. I also love the Mai Kai. Uh, you know, well, Mai Kai is great, yeah. but the Inferno Room drinks, I mean, I'm biased a little bit, but I still think they're the best. Yeah, I, this place has floored me. Uh, mm -hmm. The amount of art, the attention to detail, and the cocktails have been just phenomenal. Really yeah, good. Yeah, super good. All right, well, let's drink the drink. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Yeah. Thanks for coming out of this thing. There oh, you thank you so much. All right. Cheers. Hey, cheers. Mm hmm? Actually, it's pretty good. It's juicy. It's juicy for it's sure. It's juicy. It's, I mean, you wouldn't be bummed on this, right? You just go, That's ju it's a juicy drink. I really love guava juice. Yeah. Have you ever been to the Royal Hawaiian? In, well, oh, in, in Hawaii. Waikiki? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. They're guava juice. Really? Maybe it's just because you're on the beach at the Pink Hotel yeah. and everything, but their guava juice is it's huh. really good. All right. Well, okay, so would you order this drink? I probably would order this drink, actually. Would you guys order this drink? Be honest. Yes. 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 That dude, no. <laughs> Chunkin' Schooner, no. Great for breakfast. Great for breakfast, yeah. That guy, yeah. Pirate? No, maybe. Would you order it a second time? You saw last night's episode. Would I order it a second time? No. Nope. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the end of the episode. I really want to thank you guys for joining us here at the Inferno Room at Makahiki. If you have the opportunity to come to Indian Indiana. Yeah, we're in Indiana. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Let me do it again, all right? Jeez, this is what happens. Folks, if you have the opportunity to come to Indianapolis, you have to stop by this bar. It is really... I'm not saying it because the owner dude's right there, and I'm not saying it because we're standing in this place, but it is really one of the best tiki bars I've ever been to in my whole life. Wow. Like, yeah. honestly. Yeah. So, yeah. thanks for joining us, thanks for uh, cramming in here and sweating and stuff, and uh, we will see you in the next cocktail episode. Cheers. Aloha. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the do the stuff, join the Patreon, and we'll see you next episode. All right. All right. Smoke them if you got them. <laughs> Dude, thank you guys so much for being patient and like the whole thing because it's, this is, you know, it's a lot to like wrangle. Thanks guys. All right. Thank you so much for yeah, having me. I know, it was fun. Get drunk. Thanks, dude. Yeah. <laughs>